Module number nine, Integrated Pest Management. Pest problems occur because the system is not in balance. Most commonly, pest problems occur because of fires, floods, and land clearing because of using large areas of land for only one type of crop, introducing pests from one area into another, uh, destruction or removal of a pest predator, usually caused by pesticide use or damage to pest predator habitats. To manage pest problems, Long-term solutions should be used with an aim to return the balance of nature. Long-term solutions can sometimes take many years, so short-term solutions are also needed, such as using natural pesticides. Many different natural techniques for pest management are combined together in Integrated Pest Management, IPM. The main goal of IPM is to avoid pest problems from happening, and if pest problems do happen, to manage them by using natural, environment-friendly techniques. Every part of the environment is connected to every other part, including people. What happens to one part of a system will affect every other part of the system. This philosophy is the foundation behind every IPM technique. Observe how different parts of a system work and how they affect other parts of the same system. Parts of a system include soil, insects, plants and trees, birds, animals, water, people, and technology. If different parts of a system can be integrated, to work together, it will bring many benefits, including less resource usage and less expenses because the land will maintain itself and the resources used will mainly be locally available resources. Soil crop and environmental improvements, not gradual destruction. Increased crop resistance to pests, disease, and extreme weather increased overall productivity of the land, improved health for people. This module will explain IPM techniques, which can be used for all scales of agriculture, from small-scale home gardens and market gardens to large-scale agriculture, such as rice production, fruit trees, and all combined systems. The importance of healthy soil. Healthy living soil is soil which contains all the nutrients that plants need to grow. This condition is the most important factor affecting IPM techniques for preventing pest and disease problems. If a person is healthy, they will usually live longer, not get sick as often, and if they do become sick, will recover faster. A healthy person is stronger and more able to work and will produce children who are also healthy. It is the same with plants. The base for good health for plants and humans is also the same. A balanced variety of nutrients and minerals for plants, balanced health and nutritious foods for people, Healthy living soil for plants. A clean and comfortable house for people. Water, sunlight, and a healthy natural environment for plants and people. Healthy plants will grow stronger and will be less likely to be attacked by pests and disease. If attacked, healthy plants will suffer less damage and recover more quickly. Providing healthy soil for plants will save time, energy, and money later on. 
Natural techniques will continuously improve soil quality so plants will be healthier and pest problems can be prevented. For more information about healthy soil, see Module 4, Healthy Soil. Smart Ideas Compost is good to use on plants because it releases nutrients slowly into the soil, providing too many concentrated nutrients for plants at one time can cause plants to grow too fast and become weak, leaving them at more risk to insect attacks. Encouraging Natural Pest Predators In a healthy, balanced system, different types of plants have different types of pests, which like to attack them and different pests have different types of predators which like to feed on the pests. This will keep the number of pests in the ecosystem balanced. Natural predators are very effective at controlling pests in the garden. These natural pest predators include birds, lizards, frogs, bats, dragonflies, wasps, spiders, praying mantis, ladybugs, and some types of flies. Natural pest predators can be encouraged in your garden if you provide what attracts them, such as ponds for birds, frogs, dragonflies, wasps, bees, and fish. Some fish will feed on mosquito larvae. Uh, such as trees for birds, bats, wasps, bees, and spiders, such as rocks and rotting wood for lizards and spiders, such as flowers, small trees, and vine plants for wasps, bees, spiders, praying mantis, and ladybugs. It can take up to a few years to create a balanced pest predator population. While waiting for this process to become established, you may need to use other forms of pest management. Beware! Chemical pesticides and some natural pesticides can kill pest predators and other beneficial insects, which will damage their population. Use pesticides very carefully, only when needed, and only after you have tried using other safer methods. Healthy Environment If the area surrounding your land is healthy and diverse, the chances of pest problems are greatly reduced. A healthy environment is essential for keeping agricultural systems balanced. A healthy environment includes rivers, forest, steep slopes, house areas, and so on, protecting water sources, stopping forest burning, and preventing erosion are important steps toward achieving a healthy environment. A healthy environment will enhance the effects of all IPM, that's Integrated Pest Management, techniques. Using non-hybrid seeds. Using non-hybrid or good quality local seeds will produce plants which are naturally more resistant to pests and disease. Non-hybrid seeds from open pollination are the best seeds to use because the quality will stay the same from generation to generation and can even improve if seed saving techniques are used. For more information about seed saving, see Module 5, Seed Saving and Nurseries. Collect seeds from the best plants on your land. The seeds of these plants will be best suited to the climate and local conditions and will be more resistant to pests and diseases. Observe which crops are the best quality on your land. By collecting seeds from these plants, Families and groups can exchange or sell seeds. Think about why some crops are more resistant to pests and disease. 
Some factors could be healthy soil, natural pest predators, compost use, enough water and sunlight, and so on. By understanding this, we can breed better, healthier crops every year. Good Crop Management Good crop management can be achieved by using techniques such as combining crops, crop rotation, following natural patterns, and companion planting. Combining crops. If crop lands are planted with only one type of crop in large numbers, there is more chance of pest or disease problems. This is because pests and disease will easily spread from one plant to the next, and with one type of crop, there is large amounts of food available in one area, so the number of pests can increase drastically. On large areas of land with one type of crop, there is usually not enough natural pest predators available to control pest problems. When pests or diseases spread in large numbers, it can be very difficult to control, especially if the damage caused already covers a large area of land. Combining different types of crops together will reduce the spread of pests from one plant to the next and will eventually reduce the number of pests. For example, rows of corn can act as a pest barrier to protect the crops which are planted in between the corn rows. Crop Rotation Some types of pests and diseases live in the soil and can cause a lot of damage if the same type of crop is planted on the same land over and over again. Crop rotation means regularly changing the type of crop planted with a different type of crop. This will allow pests and diseases of one crop to die out before the crop that they attack is replanted on that land. For example, the fungus that attacks brassica, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, etc., attacks their roots and lives in the soil. By rotating brassica crops with other types of crops, the fungus will die out because the plant which they attack is not planted. Natural Patterns Using natural patterns will provide more crops and animal diversity, which helps to encourage pest predator populations and makes it more difficult for pests to spread from one plant to the next. <clears throat> Companion Planting Some types of plants grow very well if planted close together. However, there are other plants which do not grow well together. Knowledge about which plants grow well together will help improve plant growth and control pest and disease problems, which will eventually increase land productivity. Companion planting will provide many benefits such as repel insects. Plants which have strong scented leaves or flowers such as garlic, marigolds, daisies, and ginger will confuse and repel pest insects which use their sense of smell to find plants they want to eat. The marigold plant is especially good for repelling nematodes, a type of pest which lives in the soil and can damage plant roots. Attracts natural pest predators. Besides making the garden look beautiful, flowers will help to attract pest predators. Flowers can be planted around vegetables and fruit trees. Some flowers which will work well are roses, hibiscus, marigolds, and some types of legumes. Slow pest spreading. Crop pests will find it difficult to spread from one plant to the next if there are many different crops growing together. Different types of plants have different types of root growths. Knowledge of the different root growths will allow plants and trees to be planted closer together. There are some types of plants, like the eucalypt trees, which release a substance, allelopati, from their roots and this can make it difficult for other crops to grow close to them. 
This kind of knowledge needs to be collected and shared with other people. Preventing Pest Attacks Observation will prevent many pest problems before they arise. When observing, consider. Are the plants that are growing healthy? Are pests attacking the plants? Where do the pests come from? What type of pests are they? Insects or other creatures? What are the predators of this type of pest? What will attract pest predators? The earlier we know about pest and disease problems, the easier managing the problems will be. Observe the stages of a pest's lifetime. For example, the fruit fly. Eggs, worm, grub, adult. Identifying pests and diseases is very important. If you do not know, discuss it with other groups or NGOs, that's non-government organizations, which may be able to help. Each type of plant has a specific type of pest which will attack it. A pest which attacks one type of plant may not necessarily attack a different type of plant growing nearby. Knowledge about which pests will attack which plants can be used to prevent problems through techniques such as crop rotation, companion planting, and combining crops. Use different methods and sprays to control different types of pests. Using a specific pest control spray for a certain type of pest is better than using sprays which kill all types of insects. Observation will help you to choose which type of spray is best to use. Observation of pest problems and methods of pest control can happen every day while working in the garden. Children can learn about good insects and insects which become pests, and about how to control pest problems. Removing pests by hand is sometimes the most effective method of pest control, especially for home gardens. Insect pests can be collected and fed to chicken and ducks, or killed in a bucket of water. Snails can be cooked as pig or chicken feed. And in some countries, people even eat them. Pest insects also like to eat weeds. Through observation, you can find out which types of weeds attract pests away from your crops. Afterwards, these weeds, now filled with pests, can be used as animal feed or turned into compost. Plant disease and fungus. Trees infected with fungus can be helped by pruning back some branches to let in more sun and wind. Fungus needs moisture to grow, but the sun and wind will help to keep the tree dry. Always remove dead tree branches to reduce chances of fungus and disease. Observe carefully if there are crops or trees infected with fungus and remove the parts which are already infected to reduce chances of the disease spreading. Examples of pest prevention. Pest prevention for nurseries. Snails and slugs love to feed on young seedlings of cabbage, lettuce, green leaf vegetables, and eggplant. Ants can also damage seedlings and remove seeds. By growing seedlings in a nursery, pest problems will be much easier to prevent. If you use tables in the nursery, place the table legs in containers of water or oil to stop pests from climbing up. A thick layer of grease or Vaseline on the table legs will also function well. Pest Prevention for Trees A layer of grease or Vaseline on a tree trunk will stop pests from climbing up the tree. This method works well for preventing pests which lay their eggs in the soil, like fruit flies, some caterpillars and worms, ants, and other insect pests. Some trees that will benefit most from this method include orange, soursop, 
mango, and avocado trees. The process of tree greasing. One, place a 10 centimeter band of material like cloth, thick plastic, or tin foil around the tree trunk and tie it securely. Make sure that insects can't get underneath the wrapping. Cover this band with grease. Fold the top over to make sure water won't flow in. Three, check it every two weeks to make sure the band of grease is still attached to the tree trunk. Beware, do not put grease directly on the tree trunk, especially with young trees. The grease can damage or even kill the trees. Pest prevention for patties. Placing black palm fruit in paddy irrigation water will make mice uncomfortable and deter them from returning. Cut 20 to 30 black palm fruit and place in the irrigation water which flows into the patties. The best time to do this is around sunset. Repeat this method three times a week while rice grains are ripening. Beware, using too many black palm fruits is dangerous and can affect the health of people harvesting the rice grains and later eating the rice. Be careful not to use black palm fruits in water irrigation which is used for bathing. Pest traps. Baits and traps are a good way to prevent pest numbers from increasing and hence to reduce damage to your crops. Examples of pest traps. Traps for fruit flies. Fruit flies usually attack fruit trees like rose apple, mango, guava, avocado, papaya, orange, and many more. A simple trap can be made using plastic water bottles. One, cut the top off a bottle and place it in the bottle backwards. I guess they mean upside down. Two, fill the bottle with liquid bait. This bait can be a mixture of vinegar, sugar, and water, a mixture of fermented fruits and water, water smelling of rotten fish or meat, old beer. Hang these three, hang these bottles from the affected tree using strong string or wire. Ten bottle traps for each tree should work well. Another way to handle fruit fly problems is to spray the ground below fruit trees with a liquid neem mixture. Spray once before the fruit begins to grow and again just before the fruits have ripened. This will stop fruit fly larvae from changing into flies. Read the insecticide section in this module for liquid neem recipes. Smart ideas. Fruit fly traps will work more successfully if neighbors also use them. Traps for snails, slugs. Snail traps can be placed around the garden to attract and kill snails. Place a bowl or container in the ground and fill halfway with liquid bait made of milk and water or cold beer. A small amount of finely cut lettuce or cabbage can also be added. The snail slugs will enter the trap, get stuck in the liquid, and not be able to leave. If you use beer bait, the snails will be happy because they will die drunk. <laughs> Another method is to place old tin roofing or wet sacks on the ground near your vegetable plots. Snails will like to live underneath this. Check the trap every few days. Coffee husks and sawdust can be placed on paths around vegetable plots to help prevent snails from entering. Snails don't like rough surfaces. Citrus peel traps. Use half peels of citrus fruits like orange, lemon, or lime which still have a small amount of fruit attached to the peel and place on the ground. 
This fruit will attract insect pests and snail slugs and they will become trapped underneath the citrus peel. Insect nets, nets. A net can be made to catch insects like crickets and grasshoppers by simply using bamboo or wood with some old fish or mosquito netting attached. This net can become a fun game for children to see who can catch the most insects, but be careful they don't damage crops or catch beneficial insects. 